what's going on everybody welcome back to the real bodybuilding podcast this is episode number 69 and i am with a special guest missy trescott how are you hey Fuad, i'm good how are you <laughs> uh missy is uh an olympian and she placed second last year at the olympia i did yes and i thought it was um a good way to kick off a new series i'm doing which is the olympia series so you're the first guest on the Olympia, I'm going to basically interview and have conversations with everybody that's doing the Olympia from here on out. Oh, awesome. So you're the first one. So I wanted to kind of, the first question, I guess, is we we'll get right to the point is you're getting ready for the O and how does it feel? I mean, it feels amazing. It's obviously <clears throat> one of the things as a bodybuilder that we strive to do. That's the most prestigious stage that we want to get on is the Olympia. Yeah. Um, this year, you know, they keep saying it's a new era um, with COVID and everything that's happening. Mm -hmm. um, there has been some like little bumps in the road, but all in all, it's been a really, really good prep for me. And I'm so excited. We're like 58 days out now. So you're, I'm, count <laughs> you're, counting, the, you're counting the days, not the weeks. How many, how, yeah. many, how many weeks is it? It's like nine. Well, it'll be eight on Saturday. Eight. So it's pretty close actually. So you're like... Yeah. But you're always in pretty good shape. I've never seen you out of shape. So, I mean, you're not worried about conditioning or anything like that. No, I mean, John's bringing me in like pretty tight and we obviously want to be ready like two weeks out. I, I've never really gotten to that super dry, tight look before, especially yeah. in the back. And I know that John is going to do that to me this year. I'm already starting to suffer a little with the diet. So yeah. it's it's um, good. I want to educate people because a lot of my listeners probably aren't following the women's side of things. Mm -hmm. So you're in fitness. And one of the questions I want to ask you is you're talking about being dry, but in fitness, how important is conditioning like on the scorecards? So can, uh, here's the thing. Like, do they want, like, do they want you to be shredded, shredded, or do they want you to be like, just lean? So it depends what show you're doing. Um, okay. If you're doing just like a first tier kind of show, um, say like the Tampa or mm -hmm. the New York, well, New York doesn't have fitness, um, but like one of those kind of shows, yeah. Yeah. they don't necessarily go for like that super dry, hard look. And it also depends who's at the show because okay. they're comparing you to say like a top level fitness girl. Mm -hmm. um, but this year's Olympia, there's three returning Olympians. Um, the winner last year, Whitney Jones, and then Adela is coming back out oh, of really? like a seven-year retirement. Yeah. Wow, she's been and off then, for she's been off for a long time. She has, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, so that'll be cool. I've never competed against her before. Yeah. Um, so I'm excited for that. And uh, Oxana is coming back too. So, yeah. you know, those women are big hard and super tight, especially okay. from the back. Yeah. Um, so that's going to be something that I have to really bring being the underdog this year. Um, I did win the Arnold classic, yeah. but I, I am the underdog and I know that. So I, I've been preparing since like March for yeah. this day to come. So I'm ready. Is it frustrating? Cause I, I keep hearing this on the female side of the sport. Is it frustrating being judged differently at every show? Because, and I'm not asking you to knock the IFBB or anything like that. I'm not asking, I don't want to make this a negative thing. It just, as a competitor, I would imagine to myself getting ready for a contest, it must be frustrating thinking to myself, I got to be shredded for this show, but I can't be shredded for this other show. Or right. like, or being judged based on who's there. Yeah. You know, you know what I mean? Yep. Um, I think for myself personally, I just, so when I prep for a show and it's that final day, you know, you're getting on stage, whatever, you see the photos, you see your body, you feel it, you know, in your heart, what you need to do different for next time. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel for myself, as long as I just keep improving myself, Missy, then I'm okay with wherever the judges want to place me. Yeah. I just have to bring my best every time. And the past three years I've been doing that. So yeah. I hope that, to do that for the Olympia too. Well, I actually noticed you've been doing that all through your career because one of the things that caught my eye was you turned pro in Canada. Are you Canadian? Yeah, I am. Yep. I didn't even know that. Where are you from? <laughs> Ontario. Oh, you're from Ontario. What city? Um, so if you're familiar with Midland, Midland, yeah, Ontario. I, I, I am, yeah. 
three hours north of Toronto. So that's where I was born and raised. I grew okay. up there. My Canadian accent will come out sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so where are, you li- where are you living now? Are you in Vegas? No, I'm actually in uh, Redmond, Washington on okay. the West Coast. Mm-hmm. Okay. So My what- husband and I, we just travel to Vegas a lot. We, we like that's to go there. For- that's mm-hmm. why I thought that. Okay. So why, uh, how did that all come about? Was it because you met your husband or was it something else that got you to move? So I moved to the East Coast um, back in like 2013. The East Coast um, of, the, of the U.S. or Canada? Yeah, of uh, the U.S., sorry. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, so I, I was previously married. I was young and divorced, whatever. Um, but then I moved back to America like 2017-ish. Yeah. And I just decided this is where I want my roots. I want to live in America. And then I actually... Matt and I, my husband now, had been like friends for like probably like five years or so. And while I was on the East Coast, he sent me a message and was like, hey, I'm going to be out there for like a client meeting. Can I take you out for dinner? And I was like, whoa, okay. (laughs) So he took me out. And then, um, yeah, we've been like like, together. (laughs) That's great. All right. We'll come back to your husband. So. You turned pro in Canada and I noticed your record. You kind of been climbing the ranks like the last, because you turned pro in 2012, I think. I did, yeah. And, you know, we're in 2020. So for the last eight years, I've just noticed a steady climb through the ranks. So the determination, where does that come from? Because was, was there ever a point where you were like discouraged at all or anything like that? Or did you just know you're just going to keep on going and hammering away at it? So, when I turned pro in Canada in 2012, I knew in my heart that one day I wanted to like be on the Olympia stage. And I did that really early. Like I, 2015 was my first Olympia appearance. Yeah. Um, and from that moment on, I just knew that like, I wanted to be a professional bodybuilder. That's what I wanted to do as a career. I mean, I've had other like career and jobs in the past, but this mm-hmm. is by far like, my goal and just what I want to do. And my ultimate goal is to win the Olympia, but to bring a physique, like a pro level physique. Um, Like I've done figure shows in the IFBB and I've placed really well. Um, Second, third, and these women are like top Arnold and Olympia competitors. So I do have the physique part, but I want to bring that to fitness. And just with everything changing and the divisions you know, improving, like you look at um, Arnold, for instance, he was the best bodybuilder of all time, Mm -hmm. but he could never stand on stage with the open bodybuilders of today. No. Yeah. So I want people when they hear Missy Truscott, I want them to be like, Oh shit, she changed the fitness division. Like that's kind of what I want to do for the sport. It's kind of strange. Most fitness girls I know in the past always opted to switch to figure because it was easier. Because I do know, like, I I dated a a fitness girl for a little while, and I do know what the regimen is like. And for anybody who thinks it's easy, it's much, much harder than what we do. Because we just go to the gym, we do a little bit of cardio, and that's it. You're doing cardio, gym, and then choreography. Right. And it's taking a toll on your body. So explain explain to people first, like, what your day looks like. How How does your day go as far as, like, the amount of work you have to do? Sure. So like I said, I do this full time. I don't have any other job. I mean, we have like rental properties and just like little side things here and there, but my main focus is fitness. So, you know, I wake up, I get downstairs, I do my cardio, 40 minutes fasted, truly fasted. So just water. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, <laughs> I know you like, uh, I do my essential aminos before. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody gives me shit for that. They're like, that's not really fasted. I'm like, it's just essential aminos. It's not a big deal. But anyway. (laughs) I'm trying. Yeah. So I do um, my fasted cardio and then I'll stretch for 20 minutes. Yeah. And then from there, you know, food starts. So I eat my first meal. I'll eat my second meal and then I'll go train. Okay. And then post-workout, eat again, eat again, get ready for bed. So it's like, Every, my days, it's funny, Matt and I will like talk the night before and we'll like kind of plan our day. Like, okay, you're doing this, you're working from this time to this time. 
okay, yeah. we're going to shut it down and nap at this time. Like, yeah, yeah. Everything where, is all. But where does the, like, do you have a choreography period that fits in there somewhere? Oh, yeah. So um, I like to be prepared like months out. Um, okay. So I started my choreography in September. I yeah. went to this, um, to a girlfriend's place just because everything shut at that time was shut down here. Yeah. Texas barely open. So we were able to get into a gymnastics club. We banged out the routine in a weekend. Um, and yeah, it was awesome. So now I'm just kind of like practicing it here. Yeah. Like yeah. At home yeah. on hard and stuff. But yeah, I, I like to be super regimented and have everything done way ahead of time. So let me ask you at your level, like if you're, you do your cardio in the morning and you're training midday, at your level, do you have to practice your choreography? And when I say choreography, I don't necessarily mean just your routine, but like, do you have to practice your moves every day or every other day or once a week? Or is it something you just like at your level, you're so good at it, you don't have to practice them as much? So the skills I'm doing now for this routine, because they're so hard on my body, mm. I really only practice them like twice a week. Okay. Like, the, like the hard, hard tumbling skills, yeah. like twice week but like the handstands and the push-up stuff you know i try to get them in at least four times a week yeah with routine so i'll like play the music mark the tumbling but then like do like the push-ups and stuff and yeah. like the handstands just to get the the timing yeah so four times a week you're doing that plus training plus cardio yeah is your body getting beat up at all or like are you do, do you do a lot of massage or like how do you recover okay because i don't think your training is do you train more like um do you train more like a bodybuilder? You train more like a like bikini girl. Like, what's a fitness tr girl's training like? Uh, so it varies. Um, I actually train like a bodybuilder. I do John's programs. Um, mm -hmm. So, but he tailors them a little bit to me and the injuries that I have. Um, but I do a lot of massages. Um, I go to like a herbal foot place. Yeah. Um, maybe like twice a week. And then I also see a chiropractor once a week. He does ART on my lats. Um, I've been actually seeing a doctor for like certain issues I'm having, like a medical doctor. But yeah, yeah. all in all, it's, you know, it's a freaking full-time job. I'm yeah. so busy with this all the time, but it's so, important. So you're going back to the Olympia and you're competing against three Olympians because they've all won the Olympia. Yeah. And you're, you're trying to get your turn in there. Yeah. Um, I know, I don't, I know Adela is amazing. I know Oksana is amazing. I don't recall Whitney's routine last year. Um, how do you feel like your chances are against these three? Um, so I, I'm feeling really good about myself. I, you know, the fitness girls are really close. We have a tight bond. We all talk on Instagram and mm -hmm. very supportive of each other because we know how hard our division is. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, like, I know I'm the underdog and I've been busting my tail <laughs> the past couple months. And I just, I, I know what I'm going to bring and I'm, I'm really excited. I just, I have a lot of, a lot of excitement and I just, nice. I hope that, you know, your followers and your fans of the show watch the fitness division yeah. because I, I want to bring eyes to it. I think the biggest thing with my division fitness is that it's not as mainstream as like men's bodybuilding. Yeah. So there are like the top group women that just, you know, they just yeah. keep climbing and climbing. But yeah. um, I think with new eyes on the, on the sport, they're going to start critiquing. And I, I would love to hear people's critiques. Like when people post on my Instagram, like whatever the comment is, unless it's not hateful, I don't delete it, but yeah. I just, yeah, I would love it if more people watch the fitness industry so they can make their own opinion on who the winner should be. You know what's tough about the fitness division is I remember the very first time I saw it, I was at the Arnold Classic in 2001. And I walked in and sat down and they start, obviously they start the show with the fitness girls. Yeah. And I could not believe the routines. I was blown away. It was probably more interesting than the men's stuff because when the men came out, I kind of got bored even though it was like 2001 was Ronnie Coleman. But I still... It wasn't exciting as the fitness girls. Right. But it's, it's, I think the problem is it doesn't translate as well on TV. Mm. Because when you see it in real life, you're like, holy shit, look how high that girl just jumped. Right. 
but you can't really see it on TV. And I think that's probably the, the biggest issue is that like, we can't, I don't think you can see the athleticism. It doesn't translate through the screen. I think that's maybe the one thing we have to figure out how to Agreed. do a better job on, I guess. Yeah. And I feel like also with like the past, like Olympias and Arnold, because of the YouTube copyright, you can't play the music. So oh. it's just monotonous, like do, 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 but it doesn't, the routines yeah. don't play the music. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they don't get to see your full choreography because there's no music to it. It seems probably pretty, pretty boring that way. Right. Um, I want to take a second and show everybody your physique because one of the main reasons I wanted to have you on was my frustration at how amazing your physique is <laughs> and, and why I, I'm like, why is this girl doing fitness? She could be Miss Olympia figure. <laughs> is, and I, and I understand, I mean, you have a passion for it. So I'm, I'm just joking around, but like people need to see this. Like, is this, how long ago is this? this is like a few days ago, right? Um, that was what? 11 weeks out. So yeah, like two oh, weeks ago, October 2nd here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is crazy. Like, you know that, right? Thank you. Yeah. Um, it's funny. The Olympia posted that and it got like 400,000 views. I was just like mind boggled. Like, wow, that yeah, is. Because I think everybody sees it except for you. <laughs> 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 like, I'm like, you know, you could, um, <laughs> like, you know, you could do really well and figure, right? Yeah. So it's funny because last year I actually was like one point away from qualifying um, because I had done so many figure shows, but I was all, I was placing like third and second. It was just fun to travel around and, yeah. uh, you know, Matt and I love to go to shows and it was just fun at that time. But after winning the, um, Olymp or sorry, after placing second at the Olympia, I knew that I had to keep going with fitness. Like, yeah, but you said you were taking second at figure shows too. And I'm not trying to convince you yeah. one way or another. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to understand the mindset because it seems like, honestly, and I, I could be wrong, I mean, but it seems like you're just genetically made for it. <laughs> like, yeah. like, like this is a really, really crazy, like your proportions and your, the ratio of like your shoulder to waist ratio and your proportions as a whole are nuts. Thank you. So I'm like, um, it's just, a, I'm just trying to, I guess I'm just trying to understand from the outside and other than obviously you have a passion for the sport. So I can't say, you know, nobody can tell you what's right or wrong, but yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I just, I really love, I love all divisions, but I do love fitness the most because I can show off my athleticism. Um, that's one of the big reasons why I do it. I think at some point, if injuries ever become like a, a reason why I couldn't do fitness anymore, I would do figure or women's physique. Yeah. Can I tell you when I watch you do this on hard surfaces, I always freak out, right? <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure you're, you know exactly what you're doing. But when I watch this, I'm like, yeah. God, she's doing that on a, like cement or asphalt or like whatever it is. I'm like, that can't be good. Okay. You might want to close your eyes for the Olympia performance then because uh, yeah. there's going to be some <laughs> high flying stuff. <laughs> like, like this? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Um, yeah. So have you been... Has anybody else tried to push you? Has any, have anybody from the, like the higher ups in the IFB tried to like judges or anything, tried to push you towards figure or women's physique or has anybody, has anybody said anything or you just kind of, they like you um, where you are. It's funny because there, there's been a couple of judges that have come to me and said like, stay, stay in fitness. Like we will be so sad if you leave because you have such an amazing routine and the yeah. athleticism you bring. Um, my background is cheerleading and gymnastics, and I feel like a lot of those younger girls, after you know they graduate college, they don't have an outlet anymore. And me being a retired gymnast and cheerleader, they see all these skills and they're like, wow, that's something that I can do. Maybe I should get into fitness. Oh my God. So <laughs> if I can. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. That just caught me off guard. You just did a handstand and clapped your hands while you, <laughs> while you were upside down. Like right here. This is crazy. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm totally, I'm blown away by that. Now I know why you're doing what you're doing. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I'm hoping that, you know, people see like the high degree of difficulty that I put in my fitness routines. It's not just like dancing around and yeah. 
know, jumping. Like I am doing really high level skills that you don't see many people do. Mm -hmm. So you said your background was in cheerleading. Was there like, do you have, obviously you've had gymnastics from when you were a child or no? Yeah. Gymnastics as a, yeah, a child. So how long in, in total? Like when did you start gymnastics? So my parents put me in gymnastics when I was like six ish. Yeah. Um, and then I did that competitively. Uh, uh, I was a provincial level gymnast until probably like 14. And mm. then I switched to cheerleading. Um, it kind of blew up in Canada yeah. and I was like, this is fun. So I started doing cheerleading and then maybe like 17, that's when I started weightlifting with my yeah. older brother. He would, always be watching like Jay Cutler videos on YouTube. Okay. <laughs> so I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. And then seeing Adela, Kelly Ryan, all those like past Olympians competitors, I was like, mm -hmm. hmm, maybe this is something I can do. And then I just fell in love with the sport. So usually there's one thing or another that leads first. So to me, it sounds like the competitive nature of fitness is what got you interested in training or was it like, did you go work out and you just love training so much? They kind of fit together. It definitely fit together. I am super competitive. So yeah. that whole aspect of like actually performing and getting judged on, I love that part. So that's why I think I stick with the fitness division too now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're not one of these, like me and me and Ian talk about all the time that like one of the main things we like, the main thing we love about bodybuilding is just the training and the, the prep and all that. But yeah. actually getting on stage is not a big deal to us, but to, for you, that's like a main component. Like you love getting on stage. Totally. Especially, well, okay. So I do really love training and I love the diet and I love all those aspects. Um, also because it's something that my husband does with me too. Like okay. he diets hard, he trains hard. Like we're on the same schedule that way. Yeah. Um, and he's done that even before he met me. So it's not like it's something that I make him do. He does it because he wants to. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, I do love the fact that I can compete and show that athleticism. But I, I also love training too. So it's kind of like. Why, why the bodybuilder style training? Is that what you like? You just like the hardcore lifting? I do, yeah when I'm not like injured. <laughs> I always like seem to like mess up my back when I do rack pulls, but it's on the plan. So I do it, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> just don't do them anymore. Don't do the <laughs> I just, my, my, one of the critiques I've gotten from the judges, because I am younger, I'm 31. I, yeah. I need more of like a dense, thicker back, especially when I stand next to Whitney, she's got that like deep mature yeah. muscle. I need that. The only way to get that is doing deadlifts, rock pulls, that type well, of work. Not necessarily. Well, that type of work. Yeah. But not necessarily. I mean, how about T-bar rows and, you know, Nick, I was talking to Nick Walker about this mm -hmm. and Nick said one of the movements that actually helped him develop his back the best was, um, supported T-bar rows. Oh, okay. So, like, I don't know. Like if you're like, is, when you talk about your back injury, are you talking more about, is it like lower back or something else? Lower back. Yeah. Yeah, so I imagine like a, a supported T bar might might help. Yeah, John, if I, John's yeah. pretty John's pretty flexible about that stuff. Haven't have you talked to him about it? Yeah, he knows my injuries and stuff. But some things, you know, I don't like to be that. I I do online coaching too, so I know when clients are like just too much, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I. Try not to be that client to John. Like I just yeah. tell him what's important and what he needs to know. And if I do have like little tweaks here and there, like he doesn't need to know that. And I think he does. I think he does. I think, he does. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's an important part of like what, what's going on. Right. So, but um, yeah. anyway, so how long have you been coaching? Let's get into that. Um, so I've been doing online coaching for about two years. Okay. Is it something you enjoy or? I do. Yeah. I really like helping people. I like helping them reach their goals, um, especially general health people. I feel like they're just so appreciative because they see like the weight coming off and yeah. most of the time they stick with it. Right. Yeah. Um, they stick with the plans. They learn things from you and then they bring it into like their regular lives or they teach people. But yeah, it's something that 
I really enjoyed. Um, when I was in Canada, I worked as a municipal law enforcement officer. So I was always the bearer of bad news, yeah. but like you're, you're helping people. It's good. Yeah. How many do you scale back the clients when you're getting closer to the Olympia? Like, do you tell them like you can't help them for a month or you just keep going? No, no. I just keep going, keep plugging away. It's like um, kind of what I said at the beginning, just making sure everything's scheduled. My day is planned out like to the hour, to the naps, to the meals, everything is scheduled. I yeah. mean, if they're at like 8 PM when I'm getting ready for bed, like, sorry, I'll deal with you in the morning yeah. unless they're like, um, going back to John, how did you hook up with John Meadows as a coach? So I actually had been following, have been following John for like a decade. Like John's amazing. Um, he started doing my training last year for the, for the Arnold prep. Um, so I started, no, I'm sorry. Let me think here. He started doing my training for the Olympia. Okay. Um, I was, my nutrition was with Alexia Tuttle. Okay. Um, and I, at the time I had been with Alexia for like four years Mm -hmm. um she's amazing her and Chris are a great team um it just got to the point where um when you have two coaches it's really hard to um take both of their feedback and their opinions and yeah. it just got a little bit too confusing for me and when you're in that moment you don't want to have to think that's why you have a coach yeah. um so I just felt like a little torn and um, after the Arnold, I just made the decision to have John completely do my training and my diet. It's just yeah. easier. He knows how much I'm exerting myself and knows when to feed me and yeah. all of that. I had the same situation because I was working with, um, working with Dennis James back in oh. 24, 2014 and Dennis was doing my nutrition and John was doing my training and mm -hmm. I kind of felt the same way. I'm like, you know what? I just, it's too hard. Like this guy's already doing my training. And plus John's so easy to talk to. Right. <laughs> like, I was like, you know what? I'm like, how about you just take over? So it, it was the same kind of thing. It just gets like, I don't think you need two coaches. So right. I ended up going with John the same way. So how has working with John been the last year? Is it good? Everything fits the way you want it to? Yeah, John is amazing. I can't like say enough good things about him. Mm -hmm. um, he's just so on top of everything yeah. with like training to nutrition and just always there in a sense, like if I need to like talk to him, um, he's always like on the phone texting back, like he's great. And I'm also sponsored by his supplement company, Granite. Granite. Supplement. Yeah. yeah. So um, we're, we're a great team and I'm, I'm pumped to see what's going to happen with him doing my training and nutrition. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. If you come in, I mean, I don't know, your conditioning is already pretty great, but I mean, I didn't realize that conditioning was such a factor in fitness, but I'm yeah. excited. I'm excited to see what John can do with you. Um, you spoke about support system and I read a couple of your bios and it sounds like your husband is like of the utmost important to you, importance to you, which he should be. He's your husband, but most people don't talk about their husband first in their bio. <laughs> so I'm like, I had to, I had, I wanted to ask you about it. Cause I'm like, uh, it seems like he's a really, really big part of everything you have going on. He is. Um, he is amazing and he's so supportive and like I said earlier, understands what it really feels like to diet and to push your body like past its limits. And mm -hmm. just, he, he keeps me on track with everything. Um, yeah. I, I, he's, does he I, does I get choked up talking about him and I'm not going to, but I just, I'm so grateful for his love and support with everything. How long have you been together? We've been together two years, two years. Does he diet with you or no? He actually just finished up his dieting. So he's kind of feeding himself again, putting a little more calories in, but then he'll, he'll start cutting like as we get closer to the Olympia. So we'll both be hungry together. <laughs> is, he do, is he doing it? So he's hungry with you or is he doing it? Cause he wants to look good at the Olympia or what is the re like? Probably a little of both. 
<laughs> so he's not the kind of guy who will sit there and eat like a five guys burger in front of you when you're in prep. Oh, God, no, no. That's a good man. That's a good, yeah. that's a good man. So how much, let me ask you that. I ask people this all the time because it, some people don't, it's a hard question to answer when you're put on the spot, but how much of your, how much of your progress and your success would you, would you say is because of your husband? Um, I'm truly going to say that like all of it, I don't think I would like, if, if you're not like mentally in a good place, I, I think you have terrible preps and your body doesn't respond and you're just like in a shitty place. You're not productive at all. Mm -hmm. If you look at my physique, since I, I've been with Matt the last three years, it's drastically improved just everything in my life has improved. Um, the fact that the love and respect that he gives me and like the validation that I only need from him just like motivates me and like keeps me going. Yeah. He, like he loves the sport just as much as I do. And yeah, I'm just super grateful for, for everything. Do you have an other, do you have other parts to your support system or is it like you and him like ride or die kind of thing? Cause like, some people have like their husband or wife and then they have like a solid friend training partner that's always there also, or like, but some, it's like, I've seen both where like people either just have their wife or their husband that they're like, that's their main person yeah. or people have like a team of like, you know, their husband and a friend and whatever. So is there other people in your support system or is it you and your husband just kind of battling life? Um, it, it's definitely Matt and I, but I do have like a couple close girlfriends and then we have like a, a, a group of friends um, who, you know, come to my shows and support me and like understand the whole like the how I diet hard. Um, are they are they normal people or are they like us? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're normal people. <laughs> they're great. They're awesome. We go on vacation with them. Yeah. Um, but they, you know, if I'm sneaking in a, a turkey burger to the movie theater, like in my back pocket, they like laugh about it. They think it's funny. <laughs> like they don't judge me. They're, they're so awesome. And um, I, I met them through Matt, like they're, they were Matt's friends, right? And now they're my friends and they're really good friends to me now. Yeah. Um, and they fly to the Arnold, they fly to the Olympia. They're That's just great. great. Yeah. So you sneak turkey burgers into the movies. I do. <laughs> <laughs> in, a, in a ziploc bag or in a bun and everything like how are you no, no. just a, just a burger just a patty in a, in a ziploc bag and i'll put it in my back pocket or if we go to like a mariners <laughs> game or something where you have to like show your purse that's yeah. why i put it on me or i'll like stuff it in my bra uh -oh. so that i don't steal <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> you have a turkey burger stuffed in your bra okay i haven't heard that one before <laughs> no. <laughs> whatever whatever you got to do right whatever it takes i know um, yep i think it's pretty cool that you have friends like that because those are the kind of friends you need if you're going to be successful and that's kind of what i mean as a support system because the shitty kind of friends are the ones that are like come on have a drink or why are you bringing that burger and all that shit so if you have friends that are like understanding then that's pretty awesome because I, oh. I think i think that all goes into uh having a great support system it's not just who trains with you and who does this and who's this. sometimes it's just the people that support you just being there. So totally. that's pretty cool. So let's get into a diet. Why, what is, you're doing John's diet. I want to know what is a woman's diet that much different than a man's or is it just less food? Um, after doing Alexia's diet for a long time and now doing John's, I think it's less food. But, um, same, but we're looking at the same type of setup. I believe so. Yeah. 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 With carbs and fats, protein. Mm -hmm. So can you go, can you give me like, we're not going to go through your whole diet, but can you give me like what a typical meal for somebody your size is? Like, what do you, do you mind asking what I, do you mind me asking what you weigh? Oh, I don't mind. Yeah. Okay. What's uh, your... 134 right now, but okay. I am like super shredded down when I'm regular. I'm probably around like 140, 145. Okay. And your height? 5'4". Five, 5'4". Four. Five, four. Okay. So what does a meal look like for somebody five, four, one thirty-five? Like, what is that? What is that? Like, what does one meal look like typically size wise? So my morning meal, I have my, my carbs. So I'm doing, um, 
one whole egg, six egg whites, then we're doing half a cup of oatmeal, and that's, that's my meal. So that's, that, not, that's not bad at all. 350 calories. That's like what I was eating during my prep at the very end of it. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I... No, I had, I had 12 eggs, 12 egg whites and two whole eggs, but I was only eating a half a cup of oatmeal. Okay. Um, that's pretty good. So, you're, I mean, you're not, it doesn't sound like you're starving. No, like right now, um, my training days, I'm at 1600 calories. That's not a lot. No. That's not a lot. And then my training days, I'm at uh, 1400. Yeah, that's not a lot of calories, man, especially because if you're doing like your cardio and your training and your choreography or practicing your gymnastics or your routines or whatever then that's yeah that's pretty low well i'm on the fuad uh, egg white diet right now my oh. fourth <laughs> is egg white <laughs> are you doing the, like that, the bodybuilder style are you doing the ketchup too yeah just a little bit yeah you got to you got to it's the best though like that meal four with the little egg white and ketchup yeah salt I got so into that diet that I was doing like every meal it was like every every other meal was egg whites because I was like I just I don't know. Anyway. Oh man. <laughs> okay. So there is something I did want to talk to you about. I want to get into a little bit of the controversial side of the sport. So I feel like the women don't, it's harder for women to get contracts and it's harder for women. The prize money isn't as great and all that stuff. How do I've never sat down and talked to a woman about that kind of stuff. So I mean, I have a lot of friends in the IFBB, but I just never have brought up the topic. So I kind of want to ask you about that. Like, what, how do you feel about women and sponsorships and contracts at first? We'll touch on that first. How do you feel about that kind of stuff? Um, I mean, for myself, um, I am with Granite Supplements. Um, mm -hmm. they, they take good care of me. Um, but it's taken me a long time to actually find a company that, uh, I felt good going to, um, mm -hmm. I've been around for a while, like in the supplement industry. So I kind of know the ins and outs of it. And there's some companies that I wouldn't want to put my name to. And then there's, you know, granite supplements that I most like absolutely am a fan of. And that's where I went to. Um, but I know that, I know that the women have a harder time getting those sponsorships. Yeah. Um, but as for prize money, the fitness division does make more money than any other female division. Does so it really? I'm grateful for that. Yeah. Well, that's great. I, I did. I'm sorry. I didn't know that. Like I did. I just no. knew, I knew it was less than the men, but I didn't know it was more than the other women's divisions. Yeah. So it went up last year. Um, okay. Yeah. And the Arnold, it went up this year too. So, so what does the Olympia winner take home? The Olympia is 35,000. Okay. And, um, it might go up this year. Who knows? Yeah. Well, not with COVID, but yeah. Um, I guess when I was talking about sponsorships, I know you're doing well, but you're also second in the world at, at, in your division. So it's not really representative. I guess I meant like more as you're coming up for yeah. the young, for the younger girls who are kind of starting out who mm -hmm. I just see a lot of girls take sponsorships with like anybody they just they just want to be part of a team or part of a this or part of that company or whatever right. but they're not they're not really getting anything for it they're getting maybe some supplements and that's about it mm. and i wonder like is there do you have any advice for girls coming up like should they wait should they should they do the supplement only sponsorships should they wait until they can get paid should they do they take commission type sponsorships like how do you how do you navigate it as a woman? Like what kind of advice would you have for them coming up? I think that if you have like a big enough following and an organic following where people are going to listen to what you have to say and you can be an asset to a company, you should definitely try to get some money out of them. Mm -hmm. um, or if you can't afford supplements in that moment, like take a sponsorship and get the free supplements and kind of push it that way. But if you add value to the company, then you definitely need to like push for something. Yeah. Um, and you can go about it in a respectful way. And what's the worst that they're going to say? It's no. So yeah. who cares? Yeah. Move on. But I don't think it's a good idea for people, um, men or women to hop around from supplement companies. Like 
just when you see that person, oh, they're with another company or, yeah. or they're pushing this product now. And yeah. it's just, yeah. I did that though. <laughs> so, yeah, <that's, laughs> not a, but it's not my fault. I didn't, uh, I was, I think I was with three, four companies. You, I was four, I was with four companies before I started my own. So, yeah, but yeah. I mean, but they weren't my fault because I, I was with Muscle Tech and then they cut me because they had to pay Phil Heath like a million dollars a year. So they're like, we have to get rid of a bunch of people so we can afford to pay Phil I Heath. I remember that. Yep. Yeah. So like me and like 10 other guys got cut. And then, um, yeah. So anyway, there's a story behind every one, but yeah. I, do know, I, do what you, I do know what you mean. It's always better to find somewhere where you fit. Yes. And, and be there and, and believe in, in their products. Is it hard to be a woman in like, okay, let me ask you, let me rephrase that. Do you feel like you're in a male dominated sport? Does it feel like that to you or no? Yes. Totally. Is it, is it, is it shitty for lack of a better word? Like, is it, do you, do you feel like you wish there was a better way or something more for women? I think it's getting better. Um, the fact that they're having, you know, the, um, Olympia press conference where they have like all the men on stage yeah. and they're suits and everything yep. and then they pull like some of the top classic guys like chris and brian yeah now they're starting to add some of the top women like in the okay. women's division so they had whitney last year and um the the bikini girls so i think it's slowly starting to evolve and it's it's all good it's all going up so i'm good. appreciative of that but you guys aren't going to talk shit to each other like you and whitney are <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's yeah, too, no. you guys are going to be too nice. It's not going to be like a, you know, there's not going to be, there's not going to be any fire there. <laughs> so. Well, they got to throw the underdog in, maybe. I'll yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, that's pretty cool. But I mean, it's it's good that they're doing things like that because I do think, I mean, with bikini and wellness and figure and fitness, the, there's a huge female component to the sport. Yeah. So it's good that they're adding something to the Olympia. How do you feel about there? Has anybody told you about any of the changes or anything that are coming play coming to with the, the new Olympia? Like, you know, I know it's going to be in a new venue and things like that, but has anybody told you about anything else that's going on? Um, so it is going to be at planet Hollywood. Mm -hmm. um, they are selling tickets uh, for the audience to come yeah. in. I guess the state of Nevada has like put out a statement, something along the lines of if your facility has X amount of seats, you can only have X amount of people. Okay. So I don't know how many like um, audience members the Planet Hollywood right. is going to be able to hold. Yeah. Um, so that's going to be interesting. Um, but other than that, like it's, I guess it's a go and I'm how ready. Do, how do we make, how do we make this sport? less male dominated how do we do that have you ever thought about it have you ever sat down and tried to hammer out ways to like increase the visibility for women i think with pages like um this is bodybuilding michael yeah. um he does an amazing job of promoting women's fitness um huge fan of him and the other divisions as well i think just people putting more eyes on the women's division, mm -hmm. um, especially like at the amateur level. Like if you think of all those people, like they all one day want to be like a pro. Yeah. So, there's so many women. I, I, what do you want? What do you want? When, what do you want people to know about the women's divisions that they don't know? Because I don't feel like people, I don't know if there's a lot of representation out there. Like there's a lot of women out there, but I don't feel like there's, you guys have a chance to just speak your mind. So is there something out there, like a message that you want people to know about what you guys are doing? Um, I, I just want young women to know that to get at the level that we're at right now, it takes time. Like I've been doing this for 14 years training, like every, not every day, but you know, training hard, being super regimented with my diet. It doesn't happen overnight, but if you, if you want to become a pro and a serious pro top level, you just need to like be consistent and just like stay on track that way. Yeah. Um, okay. So you're getting ready for the O you're eight weeks out. What are we expecting from you at the Olympia? 
So my routine, I have like a really exciting new theme. Um, I can't tell you the theme, but I've been like planning this for like months now. I have an amazing prop that's almost being done, built, okay. building. I'm, I'm getting it built. Um, and then it's funny because Matt had reached out to Rob Bailey mm -hmm. to do some like voiceovers for my music. Okay. So I'm like performing to like Rob Bailey, like a story. That's that really awesome. Yeah. yeah. So I think his voice is so iconic, especially to like bodybuilders yeah. that they're here and be like, Oh shoot. That's Rob Bailey. Yeah. Yeah. hundred so, percent. Yeah. I'm that's, really excited. For that. You can't give us any hints for towards the prop, what it is like maybe a small uh, hint, maybe a small hint. I can't. And I'm then people, sorry. and then people can guess in the comments section. Okay. Um, hmm. Anything. It's something like from centuries ago. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Something from centuries ago. You guys can guess in the comments section and maybe Missy will check back uh, the comments and see if, if there's somebody that maybe we can give something, maybe we'll give like a hostile prize. Cool. If, some, if somebody guesses it, she'll let me know and we'll, we'll, send you the prize after the Olympia because we can't divulge it beforehand. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Well, listen, Missy, I'm really happy that you came on and I'm excited to see you at the Olympia. I actually, I always root for the underdog. So I don't want to say, I don't want to say anything against, against anybody else, but I'm hoping that you do well. I'm hoping that you win. It'd be nice to see if you could beat three Olympians, that'd be crazy imagine like I, i'm gonna try i mean i'm putting everything into this so I'm. How, you know, how many olympias is adele one adela seven yeah like that's crazy yeah and how many i think oxana has won two or three four four oh my god yeah. and then whitney's so won one two she's won she's two won. So, yeah there's 12, like 12 Olympians. You got to beat 12 Olympias. Yeah. <laughs> I'm down for it though. I mean, I'm, I'm giving it my yeah. all. Yeah. No, I'm not. You know what? I've listen. I, I mean, I, I don't like to blow smoke up anybody, but like your physique is phenomenal. Your routines are phenomenal. I don't see why you couldn't. I mean, they're all great. Like Oxana's routines are really good. Everybody's like, they're all really great too, but Totally. I don't see you're in the same caliber. Like I would love to see it. It'd be great. Yeah. And that, you know, having John in my corner too, like his eyes and expertise, like. And John, uh, and John's never won an Olympia. He's never had an Olympia like winner as a client. Wow. So yeah. You're, you're probably his best client, like highest placing client. Dang. Cause second at the <laughs> second at the Olympia last year. Right. So, I mean, there's a lot of pressure on you now. <laughs> yeah. Just, you know what? I, I, I felt pressure last year. I don't feel pressure this year because yeah. I am an underdog. They have the pressure. They're the ones that got to, you know, I really was gonna, up. I was just going to say, you seem pretty calm about it, but you're right because Adele is coming back. So she probably has something to prove. And same with Oxana. Mm -hmm. And Whitney probably wants to three peat to match up with the other two. And you're kind of the one that people aren't really, I mean, they're watching, but you know, yeah, the least, no, amount, the least amount of pressure. For sure. Yeah. And it's been really quiet, like with me on social media, um, like other pages and stuff. And I'm okay with that. Like, I yeah. just, it doesn't matter right now. It's matters like the day of the show. Of course. And as long as, you know, you have a crazy amount of fans and followers that watch your podcast, like I watch your podcast every time you put something out. Yeah. Um, so I just hope that the people listening will just watch the fitness division. Just yeah. please. Watch. Um, are you the kind of person that gets caught up with pressure or it doesn't phase you or do you thrive on it? Um, like, let's say all of a sudden tomorrow, everybody starts like the podcast goes out and everybody starts following Missy and everybody wants Missy to win. And all of a sudden you're like, Holy shit, everybody wants me to win. Is that something that would make you better, worse or indifferent? I think it's honestly going to make me better. Cause I, I need to, I need to, prove it to myself that I can, that I can do it. So I'm going to just roll with it. Um, but when I do feel like overwhelmed and pressure, like that support system kicks in, like I can sit my husband down and say like, listen, like I need to talk for like five minutes, but 
this. And then he kind of brings me back down, reels me in and tells me either what I need to hear. If I don't want to hear it, he'll tell me anyways, but <laughs> <laughs> he's pretty, he's a straight shooter like that. It sounds the same with my wife. Sometimes I'll sit down and she'll tell me something like, that's not, that's not helping. She's like, that's the truth. And I'm like, right, oh, right. Yeah. But you need it though, right? Yeah. So I wanted to ask you, you won, when you won the Arnold, was there pressure? Were you, were you the favorite or were you not the favorite when you won the Arnold? Yeah, um, I was the favorite uh, going in. How and did that, I did. How did that I feel? Felt, yeah, yeah, I felt pressure. Um, I just, uh, yeah, did, I, I did feel a lot of pressure. Did it overwhelm you at all? Or were you like, I mean, obviously it didn't overwhelm you too much because you won, but like going yeah. into the show, how did that feel? Um, it, there, it was a lot of mixed emotions because at the time that's when like COVID really hit hard. So the expo totally like yeah. canceled. There was no fans. Like they were saying that your spouses couldn't even get in to watch the show. So mm. that was really messing with me. Um, I couldn't actually like go to the bathroom. So that was like messing me up too. Yeah. I mentally like wasn't feeling it, but I'm glad I pulled it off because yeah. I, I needed, I needed that win. Yeah. Well, I know a lot of times pressure can be the, the game changer with someone. Mm -hmm. And like when I look at your rankings, so you basically climb the ranks from, you know, at, not ever at the bottom, but you claimed all the way to the top. And I'm like, I want to know, like, how did that feel coming up? Not being a favorite at shows. And then all of a sudden you're like, people are like, yeah, she's going to win the Arnold. Yeah. So, I mean, I it's a big change, I right? Totally, totally. Um, I, I, my first Olympia, I placed last. Okay. Um, so I, I have kind of like, I know yeah. what it feels like to kind of get recognized and yeah. to keep moving forward. Um, but it's just it, that people expect things from you and you have to deliver. Like you have to keep reinventing yourself, especially in fitness. Mm -hmm. um, because if you start doing the same skills over and over, they're just, it's like monotonous and you're, you get bored mm -hmm. and there's some, I don't want to be that. I don't want to be that woman that does the same skills over all yeah. the time. How does it feel standing in the last call out at your first Olympia? And then now knowing you're standing in the first call out or even at the last Olympia standing in the first call out, what's yeah. that? What's that? Cause when my, when I did my first Olympia, well, my only Olympia, I was in the last call out and that it was the first time I was in the last call out and it sucked really, really yeah. badly. Like I was like, this is a horrible, I never want to stand here again. Right. Right. And all those people like watching you and like, the <laughs> is huge. Ugh. Yeah. I know the feeling, but you know what I, you have like, you have to, that's one of the, like the stepping stones, you know, yeah. you train for X amount of years, you turn pro, you get to the Olympia stage. You're not going to be like a Nick Walker and, yeah. go and destroy right yeah, i mean yeah. but what what's the do you remember the the like what's the contrast do you remember the difference standing there in the fourth hollow and then being like how how drastic is that feeling I, it, it's a big difference and i think it's also like confidence level too like even right. you just saying it right now i could like feel it like i couldn't yeah. imagine right now being in the last call out but i Back you then, remember. It's heartbreaking. You're like, oh man, I used to be like the big fish, like in little <laughs> Ontario. I was like that girl, and now, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> it's it's such a uh, weird feeling because you're standing on the biggest stage in the world, yeah, and you're last, but you're last out of like ten people. So really, you're tenth in the world, which is amazing. Totally, but you yeah. feel horrible because you're last. <laughs> it's like such a contradiction. Totally. So. Mm -hmm. Well, what can we expect from you leading into the show? Are you going to be doing any, uh, is, are you going to be logging your progress? Are you going to be doing anything to kind of keep people interested as you lead on? Or are you the kind of, kind of person that hides away a little bit and then just shows up with the bang? Yeah. So I'm going to start like doing some vlogs on my YouTube channel. Um, okay. it's Miss Scott. And then I'm actually flying to Columbus in four weeks to see John. Okay. Wait, four weeks. Yeah. Four weeks. Um, and then we're going to do some YouTube videos for his channel and like some granite supplement stuff. Yeah. Um, and then that will be like four weeks out from the Olympia. So, yeah, I think you should, um, 
I think people would like to see a lot of YouTube stuff. You should do a lot of that, a lot, a lot, of, a lot of vlogs and things like that. So yeah, yeah. Fo follow Missy on her YouTube channel. Uh, follow Missy on her Instagram channel. Let's put the pressure on. I don't want you to be the underdog. I want to see you. I want to see everybody follow you and Thank give you a little you. bit of pressure leading in. Um, <laughs> I appreciate you coming on, Missy. Thank you for the hour. And um, we look forward to seeing you going into the show. And hopefully if you win or if you don't win, we'll come on after the show and we'll talk about how you did. Okay. Thank you, Fred. Okay. I appreciate you and everything you do for the bodybuilding community. I know I myself learned so much from your podcast every day when you put out a podcast and from your guests that you have on and just keep up all the hard work and I'm going to do the same. Okay. Thanks, Missy. I appreciate Thank it. You. All Thank right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, share with your friends, and like the video. And if you get a chance, check out the description for all the different links to all the different places you can find Hostile and myself. And lastly, check out Hostile.com for our new line of supplements and all of our apparel and gear. Thanks again for watching.